it is not the name of a human being it is your lord allah your maker he brought you to this masjid he gave you the energy the capacity he invited you in a way that your heart inclined towards coming to his house and if you were not close to him you would never go to his house we are sitting in whose house please tell me the house of allah thank allah he brought you to his own house here you will not find tea and coffee and chocolates and cakes you will find something far more valuable than this what is it hudan lil muttaqin guidance for those who have taqwa allah will show you the way to contentment towards your grave towards going towards allah so you prepare for the day you're going to meet with him all of us we have done some good deeds and some bad deeds do you know what is the mercy of allah allah tells you you are human you are insan right you are human we know that you are going to commit a few sins we know that but we want to give you a bonus to tell you that on the day of qiyama we will have a scale a scale وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا Allah says on the day of judgment we will place the scales of justice and we will weigh the deeds of the people and we won't oppress anyone not even a bit what that means is Allah says we know you did some bad deeds but if you did more good deeds than bad we will ignore the bad deeds have you ever thought of that so when you've done a few bad deeds don't lose hope change your life change your life make tauba seek the forgiveness of allah either they will be totally wiped or they will be diminished and when you come on the day of judgment and the scale is placed you will stand there watching you and i I am going to watch my deeds you are going to watch your deeds we will be so worried about our own deeds that we won't even have the time to look left or right to see the other people's deeds if the prophets of allah are recorded to have been saying nafsi nafsi on that day what chance do you and i stand la ilaha illallah they are all worried about themselves what about you and i the only one who is the greatest of the day nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will be saying ummati 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 oh allah i'm concerned about my ummah and allah will tell him i fulfill my promise to you that intercession be for whomsoever you wish from amongst your ummah with our permission may allah grant us the intercession of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam amen so your deeds are placed on the scales and now you're watching these deeds and what are you hoping you hoping you pass my children who are here matriculants you tell the ulama please make dua for me i got my matric right my exams my o level whatever else it may be please make dua come exam season kids are here for tahajjud man subhanallah i always laugh at the children i say i see you guys two times when the english league is playing and when this and when there's examinations one youngster came he says i'm fasting monday thursday for the last 3 weeks i said why i want my team to win he said la ilaha illallah i want my team to win look at the focus and dedication can't we fast monday and thursday for fi sabilillah for myself for the sake of allah even if you failed your matric but you earned jannah wallahi you have succeeded and even if you got all a's and you aced them but you didn't read salatul fajr you lost everything rak'ata al fajri khairum min ad dunya wa ma fiha the two sunnah of fajr is better than the whole world and whatever it contains in the eyes of allah are you going to get up tomorrow morning early and say oh allah This is better than the Porsches and the Ferraris and the Bugattis and the Rolls Royces and the whatever not notice I'm giving you car examples because we all owes here man mashallah even the women are into vehicles these days 
The other day, I saw someone race past me. I said, she was in niqab. I said, la ilaha illallah. The world is changing. MashaAllah. I thought my foot was heavy. I said, no ways. The sisters, mashallah, they're jimming it, man. Allah grant goodness. The point I'm raising is all this that we look at valuable, your perfumes, your clothes, your accessories, your watches, your cars, your houses, your facilities, your air cons, your bear cons, your pools, your warm, whatever it's called, heated pools and whatever else, all of that. It won't help you. The minute your eyes close forever and ever and ever and ever, what will help you is raka'ata al-fajri khayrum min dunya wa ma fiha. Your two rakats of fajr, sunnah, that is far more valuable than all of this put together. So what is it that I was saying for two months I've been struck by? I still haven't told you. I'm just building up the momentum to tell you. Allah on the day of Qiyamah will give you your book, your own book. That's what it is. I am telling you now because Allah told Nabi Muhammad ﷺ who told his companions and the chain came all the way down to us. Today we have a Hafid who is going to be completing the memorization of the Quran today. Hence we are gathered here to listen to this beautiful melodious recitation of the last few verses that he's going to recite. The whole idea is the message that came through to us includes in it the fact that Allah Almighty is going to give you your book. What's in the book? Your deeds. Your book of deeds. What did you do in your life? From the beginning of puberty to the time your eyes closed. Whatever you did is in this book. So Allah says, those who did not turn to us. How do you turn to Allah? Either by seeking forgiveness or by entering into the correct faith. You enter into the correct faith with a shahada. And you believe in the pillars of Islam and Iman. You worship Allah alone, etc, etc. Or, you're a Muslim already. You make tawbah. You seek Allah's forgiveness. Change your ways. It's, it's okay. Change it. Stop it. Your sin won't get you far. You know you're going to regret it one day. Stop it from now. It's not going to help you. It's not going to get you anywhere. You don't need it. You don't. So Allah will give you this book. Right now, guess what? You are writing the book. Today, you are writing the book. In that book, it will be stated, you gathered in this masjid, you heard this, you sat with this person, this one was next to you. That Whatever detail you want to know, you will know. How many droplets of sweat you sweated, if you did sweat, you will know. Because that day, all the records there. Detail, minor, fine, the finest, that which you didn't know, it's already in there. You are writing your book now. That's the beauty of it. Allah says, while you are writing your book, you can add and subtract and delete and change and edit. But the minute we decide, hand in your book, it's like examination. You sat in matric, one hour exam, 59, up to 59 minutes and 59 seconds, you could chop and change and delete and erase and cross and answer again and say one plus one is five, come back to say one plus one is three and then go back and 59.59, you quickly said no, one plus one is two. What happened? They said stop, which means... The time is expired. Finished. You put your pen down. Whatever you had written last is the answer that's going to be corrected or ticked or crossed. You can lead your life in the wrong path 70 years. If your life is 70 and at 70 you turn to Allah the last day, you're a lucky chap. It's in the hadith. And the opposite is true. You can have a saint for 70 years reading in the first saf. If Allah kicks you out one day before, you decided, let me just go and do X, Y, Z. May Allah protect us. May Allah never take us away except with Iman. So Allah is going to give you your book. Are you writing it now? Write it well. How do you write it well? Check it. Ask someone. Allah says, ask. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالزُّبُرِ if you don't know, ask those with knowledge. Make a friend or two who have a little bit of knowledge. Speak to them. Good company. How are you writing your book? They must look at you and correct the way you're writing your book. Hey, bye. You are writing your book here. You know what? You're writing in this book every day, two packets of cigarettes. Can't you change this, man? You know, I gave this example yesterday. 
at a masjid in Johannesburg. Hey, some of the people afterwards didn't really like it. How come? Isn't it good, uh, good advice to say quit smoking? Quit smoking. Inshallah, it's a good thing. Some of my buddies, some of the people I know well, I, you know, but we have to give good advice. I can't say, no, because my friends are smoking, it's a minor thing. Today we have a huge issue regarding what? Weed. Am I right? Youngsters are pretending like there's nothing happening. When we hear the Quran being recited just now, inshallah, it will be recited with Taj weed. But we're talking of the other weed. People are just doing it like it's nothing wrong. They say, no, but it's legalized now. What's legalized? Well, cigarettes are also legal according to the legalities of the law of the land. It doesn't make it halal. It doesn't make it a good thing or beneficial. They have to sell it to you and they have to. According to the law of the land in most of the world, right on the box, smoking kills. Finished. Straight to the point. Smoking kills. I told one guy, you know smoking kills. He said, well, breathing kills too. I said, hey, you know what? When Allah doesn't want someone to see the light, you can tell them anything. They've got a jawab, answer for you straight, flat, cash, not even a check. <laughs> May Allah grant you ease and all of us. So Allah gives you your book and Allah says, you know what? Iqara kitabaka kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. Allah. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.